Thank you. Goodbye. Hey everyone, this is Skull. As promised, I'm bringing you the Budget Necromancer Uber Tristram guide and I will not be using Enigma, Beast or any type of teleport as well as Annihilus Charm. We will focus on having durable skeletons, therefore Arm of King Leoric Tomb 1 is very important for this build. I used an up skin of the Viper Magi for plus 1 to skills, FCR and all resists. Essentially, this budget build focuses on having durable skeletons, which helps us to protect our mercenary, which is our primary damage dealer. I used plus summon skiller charms to further empower our skeletons, and the rest is life and resistance charms. As you will soon see, you do not need to have a Hellfire Torch for this build to work. However, it is a welcome upgrade. I use CTA to enhance the life pool of all minions as well as the mercenary, to make them more durable. I have invested enough strength to be able to equip my gear. The rest of the points are invested into vitality. As you can see, the skeleton mastery helps us enhance the life and damage of our minions, especially the skeletons and the revived monsters. I've invested 11 points into Clay Golem and 12 points into Golem Mastery in order to have a very durable and tanky Clay Golem. I've invested only 1 point into Corpse Explosion since that is more than sufficient in my personal opinion. I've invested 20 hard points into Bone Prism because it synergizes Bone Armor as well as Bone Spear. Throughout this video, you will see that I generally use Amplify Damage Curse. However, I will situationally use Terror Curse as well. Our mercenary is the primary damage dealer. This is very important to understand. Therefore, he needs Crashing Blow and Open Wounds. I've chosen G-Face and Obedience to help stack Crashing Blow and Dress for the Open Wounds. If you're playing on Battle.net Online, my first tip to you would be to create an online lobby game. Put in a password and a game name that you can remember. In case you get disconnected, you can easily reconnect to the game. Our first step is scouting. It is very important for a summon necromancer to be able to locate the Urdars. They have crashing blow, therefore they will be very important for this run. I prefer to check the northern section of the Frigid Highlands as well as the River of Flame because they are very close to the waypoint. You can quickly raise skeletons as shown in this location.
When you are creating your Uber portals, make sure that they are not intersecting with each other and they are easily clickable. In this video, you will see that we frequently use Revive. In order to start our fight against Uriel, it will not hurt to have additional monsters on top of our skeleton arm. As you can see, our entire skeleton army as well as the revived monsters are barely scratching the rail. Wait until my Merc actually connects on the target. You can clearly see that my skeletons as well as revived monsters are keeping the rail busy, while my Merc has started killing it. In the Furnace of Pain, Uber Israel will always spawn at the opposite side of the portal. I will keep reviving new monsters while trying to reach Israel. This way, I will retain the size of my army. Here, corpse explosion is crucial to clear out groups of enemies. I would also like to draw your attention to my positional awareness. I prefer to stay at the back of the line and let my minions do all of the work. I usually support them with the kills. Also, I regularly check my mercenary's HP. And if required, I support my mercenary with full range of potions. Since we are not using any teleport of any kind, these types of choke points can occur. I will show you how to deal with them later.
a little trick that I use to locate Lilith. I check the exit tile and always proceed to the left of the exit tile. This is not a guaranteed method, but it generally helps. I use another trick for safely exploring the rooms without even entering them. If you pay attention, you will notice that I'm casting curses into the rooms while remaining outside. You just saw how easily and safely I can locate Lilith. If you pay attention, you'll notice that a choke point is being formed right now because we're placed on a very narrow corridor. In order to fix this problem, which was mentioned earlier, I use Town Portal. And I just noticed that I may have unintentionally lied when I said there will be no teleport involved. As you can see, Lilith is preoccupied with the minions surrounding her. This creates a chance for my mercenary to connect on her. We've successfully completed all of the maneuvers. Now it's time to prepare for Uber Tristram. Do not rush into reviving Uldas, make sure that a chunk of them are dead and then revive all of them at the same time so you get the maximum value out of them. During the loading screen, I move my mouse cursor up and start clicking towards the north. This helps my character to start already moving towards the northern area of Uber Tristram. In order to show you how durable and powerful the skeletons are, I've doubled Bale and Diablo together. Since my mercenary did not connect to the target yet, you'll notice that the damage is pretty low despite having tons of Urdars. As soon as the mercenary connects to Bell, his HP starts dropping down.
the mercenary can easily be distracted by Bale's minions. Keep using your Amplified Damage Curse to remove physical immunities from those minions. If you pay attention to my positional events, I place my character near to a wall so that I don't get hit by Mephisto's lightning often. As I said before, I occasionally use the Terror Curse to get rid of the minions as well. As you can see, Uber Bale and Uber Mephisto are pretty easy to kill with this build. The challenging part is killing Uber Diablo because he frequently summons more minions. In this video, I will show you how to deal with that problem. The key to killing Uber Diablo is being aware of your mercenary's position. I am overburdened. As you can see, my mercenary is not attacking Diablo, and Diablo keeps spawning more minions. I will show you how to fix this problem pretty soon, but let's first see what could happen if things get out of hand.
As I mentioned before, positional awareness is key to completing Uber Tristram successfully. As you can see in this example, Diablo has been placed in a narrow space and he has regenerated HP because my mercenary was not hitting him with open wounds. As you can see, despite the budget build, the Bone Spear can actually do some damage to the Bone Prison summoned by Diablo. This helps you free up your mercenary if necessary. To kill Uber Diablo successfully, we're gonna make use of some open space and also we're gonna use the warping ability of our minions. We also need to ensure that our mercenary is hitting Uber Diablo. When your merc is not attacking or it is in a bad position, move away from your target. This will force your minions, including your mercenary, to reposition themselves. It also helps the AI to reacquire targets. As you can see, our minions do very little damage because we do not have beast equipment. Also, our mercenary could not attack Diablo. Therefore, Diablo has regenerated to full HP. However, the moment my mercenary starts connecting attack, you can see how fast Diablo starts losing HP. Since our mercenary died and the numbers of our army dwindled, I don't want to risk this run, therefore I will revive more Urdars, resurrect the mercenary and kill Uber Diablo. Afternoon. When I enter Uber Tristram, I want you to pay close attention to my positional awareness and how I guide my mercenary to successfully connect attacks to Diablo. Additionally, if you do not want to mess around with the positioning, just get yourself a teleport charge staff. It's 10 times easier to teleport yourself onto a boss. So all your minions teleport to directly and everything can attack. If your merc is stuck and not moving, just move your character. The merc will start moving again. Now check out this insane torch ID.
Good to see you. All right, everyone. That was it. Good luck with your Ubers, and thank you for watching.